Hey everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Almost a year ago, I had a Zealot build that I remember being incredibly fun, but also way out of my wheelhouse when it comes to being a more independent operative in the team-oriented game that is Darktide. But rest assured, I did some tinkering and I found a way better option for annihilating threats, as well as keeping myself safe when everything's looked very grim. This build can be extremely assist heavy whenever the combat director decides to spawn in like 10 crushers, each with a baby rager for a brother. Not only will you be somewhat safe a majority of the time, but you will also be able to do tremendous damage when fighting in range of everyone on the team. Okay, enough talk, let's just talk about what I cooked up. First off, the main weapon I chose was the Katachan Mark III Combat Blade. Its incredibly fast sweeps while slashing through the horde allows us to gain crits along with hitting enemy weak spots very desirable. On this, I went with more damage to unyielding enemies and more stamina for blocking and push attacks. For my blessings, I felt that anything Carapace gets immediately decimated with Ruthless Backstab. This allows us to hit with maximum rending whenever we go in for a backstab hit. Rending is penetration onto anything armored by the way, which means taking down maulers, scab ragers, or even crushers will be way easier. And to allow for more penetration whenever we're spamming light attacks, I'm going to be using Uncanny Strike. Again, gaining more rending through hitting enemy weak spots. This will be extremely easy to accomplish as we spam light chained attacks for horde clearing and heavy stabs for any single targets. Keep in mind that you'll do even more damage from behind as I also have talents assisting the damage flow there, but you can indeed do a decent amount of damage even if you can't get behind the enemy. For my secondary weapon, I'm relying on the bolt pistol as I've grown really fond of using it to stagger enemy ragers and to take out snipers or trappers whenever I hear them spawn in the distance. This is not a mandatory weapon. In my opinion, the knife will be the only weapon that I really recommend using, but for secondaries, you can pick whatever weapon you find the most fun for taking out specials or elites in the background. This build will apply way more focus as a melee fighter anyways, but you should have a reliable weapon to kill any threats your team can't reach in the distance. Anyways, if you got a bolt pistol and you want to try out what I'm doing, I went with more damage to elites and flak armored enemies. As for my blessings, since I can't find the aiming of the weapon to be too consistent for my taste, I went with point blank for a quick chance at a critical hit after getting a melee kill. Again, I'm not really relying on this to kill any droves of crushers or maulers, but it can help. And for my other blessing, I liked running gun the most since I have a good amount of stamina to be running around with it. This boosts my close range damage while I sprint and reduces my weapon spread at all times by 30%. Truly the best part of this blessing though is that you can keep sprinting and firing while fast swapping to your melee to continue the bloodshed. My curios this time was a bit mixed since I was trying out new things while doing my own research. I also learned recently that sliding under a lot of your enemy gunfire takes the need for any resistance against gunners so I opted out of it this time. For mine though, I went with one of each curios at maximum amounts. That means 17% toughness, 21% max health, and another with 3 stamina. On each of them though, I have combat ability regen, sprint efficiency, and toughness regen to help with my aura ability. Please take what I am using here with a grain of salt though. I do understand that everyone's playstyle might be different, some people don't crouch slide as much as they dodge, so resistance to an enemy type might actually help you as well as adding other curios to help strengthen your playstyle. I've been personally aiming to be a better zealot as of late. That means paying way more attention to my toughness whenever I'm getting shot at, or of course understanding when to bail out of a bad situation. I use every recording I make for this channel as a learning experience, meaning I watch back my own footage and see myself making dumb decisions all the time. I am human though. I understand that I won't always be perfect in all my actions, but I am trying to actively become better at playing with randoms in my pub matches. That all being said, I would like to go over my talent tree and talk about how we should be approaching threats all around our team. Now, I'm going to start with the most controversial aura, Loner. There's a lot of hate for zealots who run this aura, and I've been a part of many games where players will see this and they'll rage quit or get upset because they believe I'm going to run ahead and leave them all behind. I personally am not like that at all. That being said, this aura allows me to have a coherency of two, which means that if I'm ever alone, I can steadily regain my toughness on my own, as well as rely on that to stay alive if everyone else goes down. I personally treat this aura as a backup if something happens to my teammates. This way I know I can survive on my own, and I can pull off a clutch to revive my team when I can get to them. To help there, I'm also taking Shroud Field for my combat ability. With this ability, we can enter stealth, giving us 20% more movement speed and 100% more backstab damage, crit chance, and finesse damage. This amplifies all of our blessings on our combat blade and starts to synergize with a few other talents in the tree. To gain even more stealth, I have Mastercrafted Shroud Field. 
This just gives us an additional two seconds in stealth, but this can make a huge difference in rescuing someone that's gone down, or of course, chasing down another threat ahead of the team to score an easy crit proccing another talent. With Invocation of Death, we gain an additional 200% ability cooldown regeneration for four seconds on any melee critical hits that we make. This will automatically be applied with any hit that we make in Shroud Field. And to remain healthy every time we've come out of stealth, I took Invigorating Revelation. With this talent, we can replenish 40% toughness and gain 20% damage reduction over 5 seconds after leaving stealth. And to make sure that we can use stealth as a priority in our build, I took Blazing Piety. This keystone is great for this build as we can build crit chance extremely fast with our team's assistance. Every 25 enemies killed within 25 meters of us trickles to proc fury, and fury bumps our crit chance up to 15% when active. With Fury Rising, we can allow crit hits to count up towards triggering Fury, once again applying more crit chance to happen even faster. And lastly, with Righteous Warrior, we gain an additional 10% crit chance from Blazing Piety, pushing it up to 25% overall crit chance in total whenever we activate Fury. Now to make sure that we can gain crits actively as we fight, it is extremely important to emphasize our ability to score a crit hit. So with Scourge, we can apply bleed to any target whenever we make a critical hit on them. This not only causes damage over time on the target, but also grants us 10% more crit chance whenever we attack them again. And keep in mind, this can stack up to 3 more times, allowing more critical hits to occur and more crit chance to be gained over the next few seconds. This can stack while you fight in hordes or are doing single target damage against a monstrosity. The application of gaining stacks isn't based on your current target, so you can freely swipe in hordes and apply more damage to single targets with your heavy attacks. Simply entering stealth will proc your toughness regen, and hitting anything will also immediately start your combat ability regen, as well as give you a decent amount of damage reduction. Now to make sure that we can accurately kill targets in stealth with no issues, I took Backstabber, which grants us 20% more damage on any melee backstab hits, also enhancing those blessings on our combat blade. Since the blade allows for weak spot hits with its light attack chain, I wanted to up our damage there with Duelist. This gives us 50% more weak spot and critical hit damage for 3 seconds whenever we make a successful dodge. Again, this will be incredibly easy with the amount of dodges that we get on the knife. With Grievous Wounds, we can also gain 50% more stagger on any melee weak spot hits. This will help when faced against any maniacs pushing towards us. And if we're met with any unarmored enemies, we can use our blitz to make easy pickings of them. Blades of Faith has been a crutch for me when it comes to the sheer amount of ragers or gunners that I see populate in the battlefield. It does a ton of damage to any target, especially if you can hit the weak spot. Not only that, but it also allows for regeneration if you could score a melee kill on any elite or special enemy. Now, you won't have much luck on armored enemies, but like I said before, we aren't going to need to rely on our knives or gun for that. On the occasion where we do want to rely on our bolt gun, or any gun that you choose, we have Dance of Death. This talent works great for most of our ranged weapons as it tightens our spread by 75% and it also lowers our recoil by 50% just for a few seconds whenever we make a successful dodge. Making successful dodges with this build procs another talent, that being Second Wind. With Second Wind, each dodge that you make successfully, you will immediately regain 15% toughness. This is why I said dodging gunners by sliding is a lot more forgiving since you'll survive way more often as you slide towards them, proccing talents as you dodge and regain toughness. Now since this build is crit heavy, I thought taking Enduring Faith should be a no brainer since we will want to keep our survivability up whenever we move in to take out big threats. This just increases our toughness damage reduction by 50% for 4 seconds whenever we make a critical hit, which again will happen very often thanks to Shroud Field and our other talents. This obviously aids other talents, but it also helps us out whenever it comes to maintaining our consistent damage flow with Sustained Assault. With this talent, we gain 4% melee damage for 5 seconds whenever we hit an enemy with a melee attack, and this can stack up to 5 times, gaining 20% at max stacks. We can even push this further with Punishment. This talent grants us 5% impact strength for 5 seconds, as long as we connect to at least 3 enemies in our attack chain. And again, this can stack up to 5 times, and the beauty of this is that maximum stacks we gain uninterruptible. This means your attack chains cannot be broken if an enemy attacks you, and it also prevents enemies from breaking your revive or your rescues if your stamina is completely broken down. And lastly, to help further with that, I took Thy Wrath Be Swift. Enemy attacks can no longer stun us, and whenever damage is actually dealt to us, we gain 15% more movement speed for 2 seconds. This only strengthens the build further as we can get out of most situations within stealth or without it being procced. Alongside all these amazing talents are some much needed boosts for our operative. 
These boosts include melee damage, movement speed, stamina, suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. All in all, this is shaped up to be one of my favorite builds to run on my Zealot, especially when I get the opportunity to clutch up in a match. I get the bad reputation that Loner gets, but it all comes down to the type of Zealot that you are. If you run ahead of your team and provide no help in spawning countless disablers and specials that your team has to take out because of you, then yeah, you probably deserve the hate. But if you're helpful and you take out bigger issues before they become problems for your team, then that could be the biggest difference in the world. Work with your team as you see fit. You should be focusing on threats like distant gunners, snipers, or backline disablers whenever you can. And it goes without saying, but play to your strengths more. If that means being able to take down a couple maulers and crushers before they can reach your team, then do so. Otherwise, ping them and focus on another target putting pressure on someone. Stealth will get you practically out of any bad scenario. It will also allow you to take a beating since you have lots of recovery on your toughness, as well as some damage reduction, so use it whenever you can. The match that I have playing in the background was one that I really wanted to show off since I was able to clutch multiple times for my team, as well as hit some very satisfying knife throws throughout. Not only is this build very viable in every difficulty the game has to offer, but it can also help get a lot of your penances done in the process. Anyways, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more builds like this in the future, but until next time, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Please take care of yourself and enjoy the rest of the match. I'll catch you later. Shut up!
veteran and Quality. You 
weapons. How else to cleanse this place? Plague is at the heart of the heretic dwelling. It is both offering to and gift from their unholy patron. Someone's got a train station. by Jane!
heretics I pray. Using 
Automatic conveyor. Be the bummer. I'm going to cartoon trapper! 